to my channel my name is Nikki thank you for stopping by today we've got an 18 by 24 canvas we're gonna be working on and um yeah you guys are way up there so that I can get this whole canvas in frame so I'm gonna try to remember to talk loud enough that you can hear me but um please don't be too critical if my volume goes in and out because I know whenever I'm looking down, sometimes it doesn't pick up as well, but I'll, I will try to be aware of it. So anyway, okay, so we have this 18 by 24 canvas, and I'm going to go over my color palette. The first color I have is Liquitex Basics in Brilliant Purple, and then I have got Phthalo Green, and then I've got the Fine Touch in Deep Violet. I'm not going to set that on there because it's too heavy. And then I've got Decor Americana Decor Metallics in Amethyst. And I've got the Craftsmart, the Craftsmart Multi-Surface Premium Ultra Bright. That is always a mouthful. In Aqua Marine. And I also have it in Radiant Gold. And then I've got the Valspar um, Satin Ultra White. This is the color samples. I get these at Lowe's. And I've mixed it with the Decor Satin Enamels in Pure White. I will show you what I did. Um, I put, this is a nine, a nine ounce cup. And I put an ounce of Satin Enamel in it. And then I filled it all the way up, almost to the tippy top. No, probably half an ounce was left from the tippy top um, of the Valispar paint. And then I filled it the rest of the way with the Liquitex Professionals Pour It Medium. So that's my ratio. So probably one ounce of sun enamel. Seven and a half ounces of Valspar paint, and then like half an ounce of pour of medium. Um, so that's what I've got. And I've mixed up two cups of those. I probably won't need them both, but if not, I can put it in another container. Okay, so that's my color palette. And um, I wanted to use the Thalo Green. Because I haven't used it in a little while. And I thought the Aquamarine was like more uh, green than blue. But it isn't. But it's okay. We're going to roll with it anyway. I'm going to do two cups and I'm going to do a pour in a pour. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hold on shortly. And you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so I'm going to start by putting in some of the satin enamel mix. No, I am not wearing gloves. Um, I'm not going to keep on addressing it, but I'll say it a few more times. I've ran out of gloves, and given the current state of the world, those are uh, needed by medical professionals, and so I'm not going to buy any more until, um, I don't even know if I could buy any more, to be honest, but I'm definitely not going to take them off the market for paint pouring when they need to be used for medical purposes, Okay. Okay, we've addressed that. So I'm sorry. I'm very sorry if it upsets you to see paint on my hands. I promise it's washable. All right. Let's see. Oh, you know what? I should not have done that because now I'm going to have a light purple on a almost the same purple. Oh, oh, I know what we can do. I know what I can do. Don't worry. I'll fix it. I'm a little bit scatterbrained, y'all. I'm sorry. I've been going like crazy at work. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. Let's put some more sun enamel because it makes pretty cells. Trying to think 
let's think oh well my accounting professor bless her heart <laughs> i'm not being ugly when i say it like that she um she opened up all the modules if you don't know online um classes are broken into modules and like one module might be you have 16 weeks in the semester so you might have four modules and one module will be four weeks long. So you have four weeks to complete that module, right? And so on and so forth. And a lot of times professors will not let you work ahead. They want you to stay on task with the class. And so they will lock modules and they won't unlock them until their, um, their week begins. Um, and my accounting professor um since they extended spring break a week she just went and unlocked all the modules and she's like okay work ahead if you want to um so i did and i have finished all my accounting lessons um which is really nice because now i can just focus on my marketing and management class which is giving me a headache and it's really bothering me because I'm used to I'm used to making all A's and I'm not making A's in the class and I don't know what I'm doing wrong and I've scheduled meetings with the professor and I've tried to talk to her and we're not communicating very well I'll tell you that at all and I think it's unfortunate because she's a she she's a really nice lady it's just we're not communicating well at all and I don't know what to do and I'm feeling very frustrated but it's gonna be okay right right I might lose my 4.0 which is slightly well it's very upsetting to me but it is what it is it's you know it's actually lately the past week i've found it very hard to focus on my school and it's i'm sure because of the current state of things but school's like my comfort blanket you know because i'm i've been in school for so long it's the one thing that i i know and i'm good at and i can control like I know that I'll get the grade that I put the effort into, right? But I'm not getting the grades that I'm putting the effort into. And I'm just getting aggravated. But, I don't know. I don't know, y'all. I'm just going to have to keep on trying, right? Right. Because it's not just me. That's the thing. Both of those classes, my management class, I have got one, two, three, there's four of us in a group in my management class. And then um, in my marketing class, it's three of us in the group. So it's not just my grade, it's their grade too. And I think that's probably why I'm feeling most frustrated because I don't want those other people to be let down. I'm going to save y'all the agony of me spreading this out with my bare hand. And actually, it's a pain in the bahonkis to get off. It gets around my fingernails and it does not want to come off. I have to scrub my hands. Which is why I haven't been painting as much as I normally do because... It's, it's a little bit of a hassle, but actually, you know what? I'm going to look through my stash because I think I have some reusable gloves like that you get to um, do weeding in the garden, but they're rubber. And I think if I can find them, I think I bought like a whole bunch because the dollar store had them for like, I don't know, like 10 cents a pair or something. They were on clearance. 
and if I can find them, I can use those and just and just wash them. And actually, you know what? That's a really good idea because then even whenever the time comes, I can buy more of the throwaway gloves. It's probably better um, for the environment if I use those washable gloves. They're not meant to be washable, but you can because they're like rubber, you know? And they got a coating on the inside so it doesn't go through. Oh, I'm going to have to look through my stash and find them because I know I bought some. They were pink. They were for breast cancer awareness. I'm going to find them. I'm going to find them. I'll find them, y'all. I promise. Okay. So, let's get this off of my hand before it dries and dries me bonkers. Let's see. What else can I tell you guys? I'm trying to not be all sad and gloomy, you know, because the world's a mess and we need something to smile about. So, I say that and then I just spent five minutes complaining about my teacher's lack of communication skills. Maybe I have a lack of communication skills. Maybe hers are perfectly fine. I don't know. We're going to get it sorted out, though. I've got to. Got to, got to. I'm hoping this gold will make some um, sales that's not cloud sales. The other kind of sales. You know what I'm talking about? Of course you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Let's get to pouring. I'm going to pour really fast because the slower you pour, the greater the chance of this stuff getting muddy. And I don't want it to get muddy. So, yes, that went very, very fast. <laughs> You'll probably say, Nikki, what are you doing? We can't see. It's going too fast. It's okay. It's just paint coming out the cup. Don't worry. I got you. Okay, let's go again. This is a pour and a pour. It makes some really cool effects. I think I see a little mosquito flying around. If you get in my paint, little mosquito, you're just going to meet your maker really quick. Because you will drown. Go, shoo, shoo. Oh, the pretty cups. Got a lot of air bubbles in it. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want to get too close to the paint and burn it. Okay, I see some of those little doodads that I like on this side. Let's, uh, what? Y'all, they need to make something that I can sit right in the middle. So when I pour it, my paint will be centered because I can't center it for nothing. I don't think I could center it if my life depended on it. I don't understand why it's always wobbly. It's always to the right. That is the most obnoxious noise. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't want to... I don't want to lose the thingies. I want them to stay. Let's pull it back. Y'all, I have watched so many. This is this is my thing, and I know this is going to sound really bad and hypocritical, and I'm sorry, okay. But whenever I started paint pouring, I used to watch so many paint pouring videos. Um, 
on YouTube, like learning how to do this. And I kind of got burnt out watching so many. And so now when I watch them, I usually just fast forward like because I know how to layer my colors and all this other stuff that when I watch paint port mostly I'm watching how they put the paint onto the canvas from the cup right because that's where your techniques usually vary and also your paint consistencies so I don't I don't really watch like how to mix your paints and all this other stuff because I you know have to do that but if you don't know how to do it, it's really great um, to watch that. But long story short, I'm, I've kind of gotten like my select few paint porn artists that I really like to watch. And like, you know, if I'm going to watch paint porn, I watch those artists because I really, really like them. Um, and then... <laughs> The rest of the time I spend on YouTube, I'm watching these. This is going to sound really crazy. But they have these videos where, like, uh, it's really popular in a lot of Asian um, countries and also in India. Where people, they have these markets, like these stalls. And, like, you have people out there cooking, like... You know, cooking, um, they call it street food. And so there's, it's just like, they're cooking. And it's so cool to watch them cook in the, in the, in the, in the stalls. Just like these open air market things. And I know that that's like common in those countries, but where I live, we don't have those sort of things. Like, the closest thing we would have to something like that is there's a really big flea market in Mobile, um, Mobile, Alabama. They have a really big flea market. And a portion of the flea market is set up for food vendors, but it's not very many. It's only, like, maybe five or six food vendors. Um... And they all just sell kind of like the same kind of thing. Like, you know, hot dogs and stuff like that. I think there's one man that sells, oh, this corn. It's the Mexican corn where it's got the cheese on it. Uh, they roll it in the cheese. You know what I'm talking about? If not, you should try it. So they put mayonnaise on it and then they roll it in the cheese stuff. It's so good. Anyway, um, yeah. So the closest thing I have to that is the flea market. Um... But, like, these videos, it's, like, just one after another of street food vendors. And it's so cool to watch them, like, fixing that food and stuff like that. And I really like the ones in the Asian countries like Korea. And they make those pancakes. If you've not, if you've not watched these type of videos and you're, like, missing the outside world, <laughs> go watch them. Because it's kind of, like... You get to go outside and be around people, but not really, right? Because we have to be safe. But, yeah, it, it will it will help your um, feeling of being locked inside. Because there's, like, people walking around and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, I just sit there and watch them. And then I look up and an hour's passed. And I'm like, did I really just spend an hour watching people make pancakes on a stick? Really? Yes, I did. I sure did. But in all honesty, I probably need to get back to watching um more paint pouring videos just because I should support the community that I'm a part of. And I do. I just have my favorite I just have my favorite artist. Like yeah. I just have my favorite ones that I want to watch. And so I watch what they put up and then I'm just like, okay, I'm good. But I should not do that. I should explore new channels and support them. So that will be on my list of things to do in the upcoming weeks. Is yeah, I'm gonna do that. But hmm, who is my favorite paint pour? Probably 
Y'all probably can guess who my favorite paint pourer is. Sarah Mac is my favorite paint pourer. Like, I watch her videos because she has a really nice personality. And she, um, she's, she finds, like, new techniques or she finds new products for us to use. So, yeah, she's one of my favorites. And I like, I like Mina, Mina, is it Mina Villegas? I think that's her name. I'm not so good at remembering names. I just know my channels and the people that I like. You know what? I have an idea. I'm going to because I'm still a little YouTube channel, okay? I know I'm not a big channel. I'm a little channel, but there are channels that are smaller than me that create really good content for paint pouring. So, here's an idea. Tell me if you think this is a good idea. Like, I can go find new channels and I will link their channel in my description box for you guys to go check them out. And then, um, we can all find new stuff to watch and we can all support new people. Huh, I'm gonna do that. I have a little spot I'm trying to get off the canvas because it's wonky and I don't like it. Okay. To the left, to the left. Oh, geez. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this. It's nice. I like it. I'm not going to scrape it. Oh, I'll keep it. When it dries, the gold, the gold shimmery and the purple shimmery and the turquoise shimmery. It's not turquoise, it's aquamarine. It's going to look really pretty. I put, I put a resin coat on one of my pieces. That was like one of my favorite pieces. And it did something funny. It like, because I cleaned it, it didn't have any silicone in it. And it's been like four or five months since I poured it. So it, I know the paint is cured. But the resin pulled away from the edges. So like the edges don't have any resin on it. So I, got, I guess I got to put another coat of resin on it, huh? I guess that's on my list of things to do. Because I wanted to, um... I wanted to display it, but it looks kind of funky without all the resin on the whole edge. It's like all the satin enamel went here, and there's none in there. And I don't even know where this ring pour stuff is coming from, because I did not do a ring pour. It just showed up, uninvited, to my little party. Ooh, but I see some river of gold cells coming up. Ooh, 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 they're pretty. This is really cool. It's all cool. It's going to look nice when it dries. I'm trying to remember when I did my blue and gold one because I need to put a varnish on it because it's a beauty mess and it's got to go on the wall. I can't just leave it in my art room. I'm probably going to put it up before I put this paint up, but I did. a. I had a whole bunch of dried pieces and there were so many. I just made them a video by itself. Y'all got too many pieces in here. I got to do something. 
I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm running out of space. And I'm making even more. I'm a mess. Anyway, this is not a mess. This is fantabulous. And I like it. Woohoo! Okay, let's take you down. Uh, uh, okay. So, let's zoom you out. And I will show you close-ups. See, this side's kind of average. But then it starts getting interesting. Because look, there's those gold cells coming up. I like them. They make me happy. And then it starts getting really, really interesting. I like it when it does that and it looks like watercolors. And look, that's something. We have to find it. We have to find, like, you know how you find animals in the clouds? I have to play that game. Find animals in my paintings or something. Y'all, I've been inside for too long. I'm going bonkers. Anyway, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I hope I wasn't too obnoxious. Um, I'll try to be less obnoxious in the future. <laughs> And um, I hope you're staying all healthy and safe. And I will speak to you all very soon. Bye.